Hello. Um, so I'm here to talk about joy, which is the chatbot that is in, on the IRC channel here. And so uh, um, I actually want to talk a little bit how I came to like uh, the body of joy. Uh, how because chatbots are like. Uh, like I told you before, it's like chatbots uh, historically made to emulate a person. You have actually to have a, uh, the idea that you are talking with a person. And so, uh, but I was, when I, I was assigned to do this, this chatbot, I was thinking, well, um, to just make up a personality and what would be a personality that would be very uh, conspicuous as conspiracy theorists of something that would be very much like uh, uh, that would do conspiracy or believe in conspiracies. So I decided to uh, change a little bit my research, do a little research to, to know what kind of personality would be this chatbot. So um, conspiracy theories are filled with cliches. Chatting is a conversation, a quick conversation. Bots use prefabricated sentences to emulate humans. As scripted language, chatbots are made of assumptions and cliches. Much like lots of conspiracy theories, chatbots are fiction. Very often, they are supposed to feel like a person, to have a mind of personality. The most famous chatbots have women names like Elisa is the very, very famous one, and Alice, which uh, just got a Lobner Prize. That means that, that this, the, like, uh, they really believe it's, you can really believe you're talking with a person like, uh, when you talk with this chatbot. Gossips and conspiracy theories could be seen as counter discourses, narratives to get around the official stories or alternative explanations for facts. Conspiracy theories often are much more, for, much, far more interesting a story than a reality or truth. Chatbots are in a sense a fictional character and can generate stories throughout conversations. That's so what's Joy is doing in the channel. Uh, this is from a text uh, I took from the a text from the Geuze about their own bots. I just just a paragraph. In between man and machine, codes attempt to emulate natural language. Scripts are translated through browsers, rendering chatbots of various of various kinds, ready for input and exchange. The chatbot as it is more commonly known, imitates conversation. It's a kind of sympathetic ear that can hear but not listen. In brief, it's a simulation of a chat based on a source code, propositions and keywords. Its structure is purely mathematical, a classic play of probabilities. So uh, chatbots want to be seen as human. So a chatbot with a compass conspiracy uh, about in a conspiracy lecture, which should have a conspiracy mind. And uh, the first thing I, you could think like a conspiracy mind would be something, someone that's paranoid, afraid, or having del del delusional disorders, that's the clinical name of, for paranoia. Uh, uh, I was not very satisfied with the idea of paranoia, actually. Um, Conspiracy theories have this halo of being stupid or untruth by excellence. They are legends, they are folklore of um, untrue, just untrue facts. Uh, you have, just because you have this opposition like uh, the uh, theory and the debunking of the theory, the debunking would be the facts. Uh, and also because on Whenever you say that something is a conspiracy theory in the media, you're labeling someone like uh, you labeling like it's an untrue story. Um, and also looking on the internet, what you you get the impression that you uh, conspiracy theory is like some sort of hip hop of things people who don't feel that isn't right 
and they try to make a more plausible story. This theory is like uh, taking some sort of red pill, like a Matrix story. Uh, so people finally see that reality is a carefully engineering hallucination, and the non-believers just don't get it. Those who have taken the red pill believe, for instance, that actual world resources are in the hands of Rothschilds, the Masons, and the aliens all together, and they all operate through all the mega computer in um, Brussels. And this, they're going to all rule the world. I even found a, a very strange thing. It was an um, alien film. It's totally uh, stupid. Like, and in a in a very um, in a forum, and I found a forum. It was this film of an alien being interrogated. And what was really very amazing is that uh, it, it was a forum. They were People were discussing how horrible they found that uh, like the governments could do something so dreadful with some, such a nice uh, creature, you know. And uh, I, I, like, it was really, like, you can, you, I couldn't believe that people believe on those things just because they are plain stupid. So, and I found a very nice text. It's from uh, Bertrand Russo, and I'm going to read for you also. Uh, what a man believes upon grossly insufficient evidence is an index into his desires. If a man is offered a fact which goes against his instincts, he will scrutinize it closely, and unless the evidence is overwhelming, he will refuse to believe it. If, on the other hand, he's offered something which affords a reason for acting in accordance to his instincts, he will accept it even on the slightest evidence. The or origin of myths is explained this way. And uh, that what I make of it is that uh, it's to, to believe on, it, on a story or not is much, a lot of... Uh, um, a, ch a lot of it's about a choice made in you know, your instinct and in your gut feelings. And because I was looking very much into um, like uh, sources, like just like the conspiracy theorist does, like sites like Above Top Secret, Crank.net, Planet X, and there's a lot of all those sites on the, on the internet, I decided that I wanted to make a, a research in another way, so I would make my own conspiracy. So I invited some people to talk about me, talk with me about two main questions I have. I had about this conspiracy mind, or how would, how would I call the bot. And one, one of my questions was like, one uh, is something about paranoid behavior, and so one is something about critique. And the other question was, what do artists and activists and others could do with conspiracy theories? One of the people I talked with about it was an artist, and his, his the evidence we talked. And he told me, he was uh, um, uh, like, he, he told me conspiracy theories often point to other issues at play, so they are interesting. In our ongoing photo series, I've been interested in the relationship between war infrastructure, the UFOs, and other myths about the American Southwest. One of my trips was about the 60th anniversary of the first atomic test. Afterwards, I traveled 45 minutes and I was in Roswell. Well, Roswell, if everybody knows, is a very big UFO conspiracy theory. Uh, it was a powerful moment and made me realize that Roswell was an indirect result of the atomic test. Somehow a misplacement of anxieties caused by the proximity of the bomb and the cosmological, ontological issues that were caused. Uh, so, uh, the idea that uh, uh, conspiracy theories would be very uh, fruitful because it would be um, another way to, to relate to the anxieties caused by facts or 
the way to make sense of the word of uh, uh, resolving anxieties wasn't quite so feeling well for me because the thing I, th I thought was what, what about critique and one of the things I want to say about uh, like this kind of dissolving anxieties, like uh, the idea, I was very charmed about the idea of making sense of the word, because it's, uh, to make sense of the word is not something that people do passively. I think it has a lot to do with conspiracy theories, because um, it's just like you talk a language. While you're talking uh, a language, you are um, complying with the rules of grammar, but at the same time you're negotiating with the rules of grammar. And that's some, somehow I got the idea that it would work a lot with making up stories to resolve some kind of uh, like anxieties. The idea, so uh, I have to, I want to read a little, another little text, it was from uh, uh, Bruno Latour about critique and, uh, and it's like what has become of critique when a book that claims that no plan ever crashed in the Pentagon can be a bestseller, uh, the smoke of the event has not yet finished settling before dozens of conspiracy theories begin revising the official account, adding even more ruin to the ruins, adding even more smoke to the smoke. What has become of the critique when my neighbor in the little Bourdonna village in France, where I live, looks down on me as some hopelessly naive because I believe the United States have been attacked by terrorists. What have become of critique when there is a whole industry denying that Apollo program landed on the moon? What has become of critique when DARPA uses for its total information awareness project the Baconian slogan, Ciencia es Potencia? Uh, did I read that somewhere in Michel Foucault? Uh, Maybe I'm taking conspiracy theories too seriously, but it worries me to detect in those mad mixtures of knee-jerk disbelief, punctuous demands for proofs and free use of power explanation from the social Neverland, making of the weapons, many of the weapons used by social critique. Of course, conspiracy theories are an absurd deformation of our own arguments, but like weapons smuggled throughout the fuzzy border of the wrong party, these are those weapons non adeles My other question was, how does this feeling of discomfort uh, and anxiety uh, could be fruitful? And again, what's the, uh, the, uh, one is thinks something about alertness and vigilance and some, one something about paranoid behavior. Um, and then that's... Throughout all this, this time, actually all those questions I was making for, with, to people who I invited to talk with me about those things. So uh, it's and another one person I talked about it and it was very important to me to uh, understand my question was a philosopher called Wolfgang Sulze. And uh, he said that the, actually the like, boundary between alertness and paranoia is reality. Being paranoid would be being alert to something non-existent. And that is probably the true crux of the matter. The internet and digital media act as engines of fictionalization of experience, blurring established boundaries between fiction and reality. Therefore, also the distinction between alertness and paranoia becomes problematic. If reality is therefore not reliable, criteria for distinction between critique and paranoid behavior, then we can either look for a new criterion or simp simply abandon the distinction. Uh, then he talks very much, that I, find it, I found it very charming, this idea that uh, uh, you actually uh, critique would be an exaggeration of alertness, but also something different. Uh, he, was, he talked very much about uh, um, I think about, when I talk about exaggerators, I about, think also about science fiction and all sorts of fictions. Uh, there are all paranoid narratives that, con that contain a critique of the status quo. Uh, attention, based on the understanding that reality has become a void concept, 
And what matters is the amount of the duration of the tension uh, because the co we construct temporary rela uh, realities focused on our attention. And here I would suggest that critique requires and allows more and longer attention while paranoia dissolves the objects that critical attention should be directed at. Therefore, people sometimes say that all paranoia is just a nuisance. Conspiracy theories would be child's play in the best cases, nothing to do with the real world, which is the world that demands attention and rationality and reality. Remembering that attention to the uh, real is another way of saying rational, then conspiracy theories would be something uh, irrational. But the thing is, we need the irrational, we need the fantastic. Always to reduce the violence of reason, of rationality, of the real, which otherwise establish themselves as ultimate, unaccountable power against which there is no appeal, and that turned political life into buried life. Perhaps, therefore, a temporary answer could be that the difference between critique and paranoia is like the difference between reality, rationality, uh, and fiction, and ir irrationality. Conspiracy theories might be cap capable of correcting and inspiring critique that otherwise would not take place because critique can never be a critique if it's just realistic then it would be a mere, mere te technical critique and optimization of the status quo. So without ex exaggerated alertness or paranoia, violence might become identical with reality, and like reality, you no know, need for justification. Oh, uh, I, f I forgot to show uh, the other people I conspire with. Uh, well, well. Um, there is also something that uh, Latour says about uh, critique. Uh, that's not the one that debunks things, but the one who assembles. Uh, the, critic, the critic is not the one who lifts the rug from under the feet of the naive believers, but the one who offers and participates, offers the participants arenas on which to gather. If something is constructed, then it means it's fragile and thus in great need for care and caution. Well, uh, f feminist theories talk very much about uh, what they call partial realities that would be fit very well in the idea of uh, experiencing parallel stories or parallel explanations for the same facts. So, in this sense, actually what happened is that Joy, uh, this is just a film, Joy uh, is a chatbot fiction uh, that as a character, she tries to make sense of the world around her, is very, very alert, is irrational, sees connections everywhere, don't believe in accidents, don't believe it can happen, and have evidence and sources sometimes trustworthy, sometimes really crap and cranky. So, and the last question I had about how to make a bot, uh, cook to code a chat bot for uh, here, is what happened when this kind of mind gets networked. And then it was, uh, well, then you have something to see. Then it's, uh, um, uh, I, then I talked with someone else, told me something very interesting about it. And his name is Alan Siegel. And he's also an artist. And he says something that's, uh, I found it really interesting. That's, that what's interesting about uh, those theories is that, uh, um, how they feed upon one another, just like an organism mutating as we, some, until we lose touch and where those stories began and where they, or how they began. And that the internet plays a big role because of its speeds, but also as a fictional space. Uh, 
Just as easily as it can assemble, it can disassemble rapidly as well. It's fragile connection bridge that produces our uh, so you can say that something, somehow the internet is a good ground for creating fiction, also because it's fragile connection with reality and at the same time the ability to connect re with reality. So, uh, to finish it all, uh, Joy has, uh, all, in all those interviews, it's actually her body. She's, uh, uh, she has the ideas and the text of all those people who have been talking with about paranoia, critique, and alertness. So, that's it. Okay, thank you very much, Claudia. And uh, just, uh, again, while we uh, get Alessandro and Hans up here uh, wired up, um, is there anybody who would like to uh, comment on or question anything that uh, Claudia was talking about? No, you, yeah? Hang on. Well, um, sorry, sorry. It's actually um, also f a little bit for the other person, but ne never mind. No, it's, it's just I... I wonder if conspiracy idea is not also just about the idea that that people can lie and that they can have another agenda than that they show you. So that this reality, I'm, because I, your bot is kind of very clearly saying what she is up to. I mean, she tells you that she is about a conspiracy so that's a little bit not very like the idea of a conspiracy because it's about that you don't really know what somebody's up to or what they are really trying to s to achieve or what they want to do so I mean she's a little too open about herself in that sense it's, it's, it's in, indeed it's about uh, to, uh, conspiracy theories is like, uh, about secrecy uh, but I, I I didn't. Uh, I didn't like the. Um, I didn't thought it was very interesting to to have it because I wanted to have something a discussion going on about conspiracy theory rather than have some uh, conspiracy made up and uh, uh, make people believe that it was true. I mean, uh, there is also. There is also. I, I tapped very much into the idea of how, uh, uh, for instance, gossips. They can, uh, if you spread uh, uh, a story, how can they can be used to, uh, they just grow on, grow on, grow on, and they make a story. They, they even used by, by companies to, um, like a, a marketing uh, problem. But the, 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 I, I think you're right, like it's, uh, um, uh, secrecy is really a part of conspiracy uh, theories, but I didn't want to have uh, uh, made up something. I really wanted to have a discussion. <laughs>